replaying Perfect Dark, I feel like FPS games just aren't made like this anymore. And that's both a positive thing and a shame at the same time. I think first-person shooters have evolved the most of any genre since their advent with Battlezone, Doom, and Quake, especially on consoles where controls were always an issue. And somehow, Rare made it work with the wonky N64 controller even if it now feels incredibly dated. So let's take a look back at Perfect Dark. After GoldenEye was released on the N64 and revolutionized the FPS genre on consoles, people were chomping at the bit for a sequel. So when Rare announced Perfect Dark, a brand new IP in the style of GoldenEye, it wasn't what we were expecting. As a quick recap for those of you who aren't as old as I- Hold on, my back went out again. GoldenEye was released in 1997 to the N64, and before that, the expectation was that FPS games didn't work on consoles because of, well, controllers like this. But GoldenEye blew people away, and was essentially the Fortnite of its time in terms of popularity. The multiplayer was an absolute party favorite, and the game became iconic. So fast forward to 2000 and its spiritual successor, Perfect Dark. Booting up the game, you start with Data Dine Central, and one thing that immediately stood out is the mission structure of Rare's FPS games. You could choose to be either an agent, special agent, or perfect agent, and each choice came with more requirements. And, of course, much more challenging AI. So, if you wanted to enjoy more objectives, you had to get good. But that's part of what made the game's solo campaign so replayable. If you finished the game in Special Agent, it gave you more incentive to go back and replay the campaign again, as there would be new objectives. I'm not mentioning Agent because, come on, who played Agent Mode? Okay, so this badass future of Perfect Dark with flying cars takes place in the far, far off future of 2023. And I'd say we're about there with the cars and weaponry. Oh my <laughs> You're immediately thrust into a cool infiltration mission where your objective is to extract Dr. Carol and... Okay, now that I'm playing with the N64 controller, it is weird compared to today. The analog stick moves you forward and back, but also tilts your head left and right. Meanwhile, the C buttons move you left and right, but then tilt your head up and down. It's weird, because you expect turning to be the C buttons and moving to be the analog stick. You can change your controls, but you can never set the analog to be walk and strafe, meaning you can't mimic modern controls. So, somehow the default feels the most natural on the N64. And I don't know how many people realize this, but you could actually do a dual controller setup. It may look ridiculous, but now I've got dual analog, baby! Now you're playing with power! And speaking of power, you actually need a RAM expansion pack on the N64 to even play, well, pretty much the entire game. And luckily, Donkey Kong 64 came with one. Don't replay that one. Trust me. Okay, so back to Datadyne and the campaign of Perfect Dark. Part of what made the game so cool, compared to many modern FPS games, was this mission structure. You weren't just gunning down and shooting enemies. Instead, you had specific tasks you had to take care of, like disabling security, shooting cameras that might spot you, and even reprogramming cleaning robots. That meant, oftentimes, you didn't actually have to murder every single enemy in your path. You only had to murder every single enemy in your path, sometimes. All of this aided by, in retrospect and now playing the game again, an incredibly forgiving aim assist. As long as your cursor was pointed in the general vicinity of an enemy, you could count on the aim assist to take charge and start shooting the wrong enemy who was next to the one you actually wanted to shoot. And lest I forget, as it's a rare N64 game, everybody knows some form of kung fu, and karate chops are an acceptable way to attack if you don't have a gun. You also have plenty of gadgets, similar to James Bond, that would help you accomplish your various tasks. From ECM mines you'd have to place on security systems, to your handy cam spy you could send out on its own, and more. The game was filled with cool sci-fi tech you'd have to utilize on your missions. And that's another major theme of Perfect Dark, the science fiction elements. Dr. Carol, for example, turns out to be an AI. Uh... Yeah, and by that I mean a flying laptop with flappy robot wings. And who could forget the major reveal of Perfect Dark when you first find Elvis the alien, who's part of a race trying to protect humanity from an evil alien race. The plot is off the walls and continuously brings in more and more insane weapons with the combination of advanced human technology and alien weaponry. 
What that meant was some super creative choices that made both the solo campaign and multiplayer an absolute blast to play. There was, of course, the laptop gun. This iconic weapon looks just like a general laptop, but also has a mode that transforms it into a submachine gun. And even better, you could also deploy it as a sentry gun turret, making it one of the better weapons of the game. And who could forget the Farsight XR-20, which combines an X-ray with a gun that can literally shoot through walls! It even had a secondary mode that tracked its targets. And those are just some of the cool aspects of these weapons compared to Goldeneye. Most weapons had two modes, and while some were better than others, with Joanna's Handy Falcon 2 only having a pistol whip as its secondary mode, it was exciting picking up a new gun and discovering all of its unique capabilities. Even the music of the game is badass, and I unashamedly would listen to the OST from the game when I wanted a break. Major shout out to Airbase Espionage X. That song is mwah, chef's kiss good. Also, as a former resident, I have a soft spot for both the fact you end up in Chicago during the course of the campaign and the song itself. Chicago, which looks, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much what I remember Chicago looking like. There's plenty to love about Perfect Dark that I think is now often considered bad game design. Oftentimes you'll find yourself backtracking or a little confused about how to tackle a mission objective. There is a mission briefing you can read at any point that will hint you in the right direction, but it's not always fully clear. And honestly, even in replaying the game, I kind of like that. The game actually trusts you to experiment and figure things out. And sometimes you will fail, and not just because you got shot in the face. Alright, a lot of times because you got shot in the face. But sometimes it was because you couldn't quite figure out how to do an objective. And I kind of dig that the game just lets you fail and try again. And beyond that, another thing I just love about Perfect Dark are the cheats you can unlock. It was an era where you didn't need to purchase add-ons and DLC, so developers really pushed to make their games as replayable as possible, with cheese being just one of those incentives. And Perfect Dark handled this in the, well, perfect way, with cheats being something you unlock by completing missions, oftentimes within a certain amount of time and on a certain difficulty. That meant you had a strong incentive to replay a level over and over and over, and over again, until you finally mastered it and unlocked the Psychosis Gun. Which is yet another amazing and creative weapon that made enemy AI fight against their own teammates. In December 2020, a new Perfect Dark was announced at the Game Awards, which is being developed by a new Microsoft studio called The Initiative. And while Perfect Dark Zero was definitely not the sequel anybody wanted, I like to hope that the new Perfect Dark is something that stays true to the original while modernizing its controls and handling. I think if it can tap into the creativity and mission structure of the original game, then we'll have something truly fantastic to look forward to. And who doesn't want a brand new Perfect Dark multiplayer? Just stop looking at my screen, damn it! I know you were screen looking! Don't try to deny it! What are some of your favorite memories playing Perfect Dark, and are you looking forward to the sequel? Let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.